All right, that look, sounds like we're on go. The bell rings, class begins, right? That's the way things go. So this is Google Sites, um, the basic version of Google Sites. We're going to be talking some about how you can use it, what are you doing, how are different types of things along those lines. My name is John Wharf. I work with MCNC. Uh, we're a nonprofit out of Durham that works with the school districts all across the state. <clears throat> One of the things that I do is I work with districts on Google integration, Google migrations, things along those lines. My email address is up on the board, as well a uh, goo.gl link that will take you to several trainings that I've done in the past, and the ones that I do today, I'm recording and will be posting those up online as well. So I am recording the sessions, we'll have those posted up there later on today for you guys to take advantage of. So Google Sites. How many of you are already using Google Sites? Okay. How many of you are elementary? Middle? High school? Okay. So Google Sites is being used in a lot of different ways. Uh, from school district websites, we've had a sudden rash of a lot of school districts are moving their entire district over to Google Sites. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, it's very basic. You can't do a whole lot with it. Well, it's a lot of what you put into it is what you get out of it. So with it, a lot of districts are using Google Sites as well as schools. Individual schools are migrating their websites to it and individual classrooms. How many of you use Google Drive? So for me... I don't use Microsoft Office. Everything I do is in Google Drive. I use a Chromebook all the time. My Chromebook only has Google Docs on it. Now, when I came in, I was going to use the machine up here, and then I remembered, oh, I was going to record today's session. So I flipped over and used my Chromebook instead because I've got some recording software on it that will allow me to record the sessions. But Google Sites is where it all comes together. You've got documents, you've got spreadsheets, you've got calendars, you've got drawings, you've got videos that you've done. Now, where do I put it all at? Well, you could store it all in the Google Drive folder, but then people got to know where stuff's at or navigate through there. A Google Site, a website that you could bring everything together, give it to the students, give it to the staff, whatever the case may be, to bring it all together. Now, another great thing is it works on any browser. Whether you've got Safari, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Destroyer, whichever one you want to use, it works in. Now, yes, some of the older browsers won't show up as well. If you're still running Windows XP, with Internet Explorer 7 or 6 or something like that, it's not going to look the same as what it would with the new version of Chrome. Now, it also works on mobile browsers. you got these nice things, smartphones, whatever the case, or a tablet. You can adjust a Google site by a click of a button. It will automatically adjust so that it's easier to read on a smartphone device. Now, I'm going to show you here in a few minutes where that's at to where you can go in and see that as well. I'm not all about presentations. We're going to dive in and do some things hands-on, look at some things here in just a minute. <clears throat> so if it's unchecked over on the right, everything's compressed. Then you got to zoom in, be able to see it. Or if you check the box, it automatically moves everything, puts it down the right down the side of your page to where it's able to view it all in a line. No, it's not as pretty as what you have on the other, but it's going to be a little bit better for you to read. <clears throat> so page types. You can create your own templates, or you can use ones that are already there for you. Now, a generic web page. Well, that's just where you go in, you type data, you type in the different types of things. You've also got announcements, and the presentation is going to be posted up on the website later on. 
you've also got announcements. Well, how many of you know how to use WordPress? Ever use WordPress or anything like that? Or maybe you want to create announcements, daily announcements. The students come in. Let's get your daily announcements of what you're supposed to be doing. Assignments. You can post the assignments to it and say, hey, today's assignment is this. And then it's just a running announcement that keeps going through your site. And you can have it where it's only five or ten or however many show up on there. And then they can go back to the archive to see more if they need to. It is. So if you look here, they're using this one as a blog. Teacher goes in, puts a blog in there, and you can actually have it to where people can reply to it as well. So it will work as a blog site where you can type and then allow people to respond if you want to. You can see there, we've got announcements, and over on the left it says blog, and it's got a bunch of different entries into it to where you can go click on each one. And I'll actually show you guys a site here in just a minute that I do that has this type of thing with it. You can also subscribe to the post. If you're familiar with RSS readers, you can subscribe to a website and get information via other methods to be able to come in. Now, schools that have one-to-ones, I've seen teachers go in, they create RSS feeds through a Google site, and then the students... They have a Chromebook or a laptop or whatever the case. They have an RSS reader that can read in the newest posts for their four teachers that they have or however many that they have. It reads them in so they get their assignments through that RSS reader rather than having to actually go to the teacher's website to get the information. A file cabinet. You can upload if you still use Microsoft Office. You can upload Word documents zip files, uh, pictures, whatever the case that you want to upload for your students to download, you can upload it into it and be able to go back in and direct them to download it or view it, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> a list of items. We can upload a list of them, create it as a different category view. Now you can also, when you're doing these, uh, that's the attachments, Jump ahead to the list. You can put information up there on the list. I want to hear, you see we've got, it's the owner, it's a project. We've got the owner, we've got a description here of what they're supposed to be doing, the resolution, is it complete or not complete. You can customize those different types of things to where you can do them um, in the order that you want it to be or whatever the case. Start pages. I like a start page, okay? Because I come in every day, I'm on a routine if I'm actually in the office. I come in, I'm on a routine. I want to see what the weather's going to be today. I want to see what the top news is. I want to see whatever the case may be. You can create a start page that brings you all of that information in the beginning so that you can see it as soon as you bring up your web browser. Or maybe for your students, you create a start page for them that brings up the local weather, the upcoming three assignments that they've got to do, maybe a couple of news things if you teach English or uh, social studies, current events, something along those lines, have it automatically bring that data forward to them. There's some other neat things that you can do. <coughs> Excuse me. With the Google site, have students turn in assignments. Here, if they're typing up a Word document, we can actually have them turn it in. Now, this is a back end script that's added into it. Uh, gave this to a school over in Wake County. It spread like wildfire through their school. Their students don't have Google Apps accounts yet. Well, they also don't have local they don't have logins to the computer so everything a student does they have to do it right then and turn it into a teacher so what they do is they type up their document they either save it on the flash drive or if they're done with it they go to the teacher's google site and they turn in their assignment 
they can easily upload it in there and it will automatically put it in the teacher's Google Drive account for you to go and view it and grade it at a later time. Now this is available. There's a video for you to watch and you'll have this in the presentation of how you can actually go through set all this up to be able to do it inside of your classroom if you're interested. <coughs> Calendars. So I've got kids. I know that when they get older, they don't always tell you everything that's coming up that's due in class. Um, as they get older, I've got one that's in third grade and one that's in seventh grade. My seventh grader I don't know whether to always believe I don't have any homework or I don't have any tests coming up or whatever. I'm a firm believer in it's the parent's responsibility to know what's going on in their kid's classroom. Okay? So as a parent, I'm constantly asking, are you sure you don't have any homework? Let me see your planner. Or I like to work with teachers to get a homework calendar up online so parents can go and see it. You can post your calendar directly inside of your website, embed it in there to where we can go and see it at a later time. And also with Google Calendar, I can subscribe to it. So I can easily go to my, my phone and access my child's calendar, the school calendar, whatever the case may be. So embed your calendar let the parents know what's going on in the classroom so they know oh well you got a chapter 5 test tomorrow I think you really ought to be studying that instead of playing your games or whatever the case inserting pictures now any art teachers I love to see what some teachers do with Google sites that are art teachers they're constantly taking pictures of the students' artwork, posting it up there. Well, it also encourages the students to keep a portfolio, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But you can upload pictures. You can adjust the sizes. You can do whatever the case is that you want to do with it. <clears throat> Inserting your Google Documents. I've got a website for my class, high school. We're prepping them to be college students. Start with a syllabus. This is what you're expected. This is what you're going to see when you get to college. This is what you're supposed to work off of. Give them the syllabus of what they're supposed to be doing, and then it's automatically on your website. They can always refer back to it to find it again. Publishing a document directly to the web can be done as well. Presentations. All of my presentations that you get, that Google site that I gave you guys, the goo.gl, the presentations are up there to where you can click through the presentations. If you put links in your presentations to different things, they're automatically clickable. So then as you're, they're going through it on the Google site, they can actually click on the link and it takes them out to the web page to show them something else or the video that I sh showed you guys just a second ago. Google Forms. How many of you are using Google Forms? Okay. Those that have used a Google Form, to get a student to go to that form to fill it out, maybe you're using it as a test or something, you got to give them that really long URL. Or we can embed it directly into your Google site, have them fill out the form, and it automatically brings it to you. Google Drawings can be also imported in. We're going to skip through that. Gadgets. Google gadgets are some neat little things that you can add in. Well, here they're showing a countdown. 99 days till a portfolio is due. Or 113 days till something else. You've got access to being able to add those countdowns in, as well as there's several other things that you can add in. A gadget such as if your students are on Google+. Plus or parents or anything along those lines. So gadgets are out there and available for you. Not all of them are always the best of things to add. Some things are not 
fully supported, so they may have some uh, bugs in it to where it may work, it may not work, things along those lines. You can also add a gadget by the URL. Those that are public and featured that are added out there should work for your Google site. Now, the ones that those are also vetted by Google to a degree. But if you add a gadget by a URL, somebody creates one and you find it, you need to be aware that it may not always work. So we've got that welcome page. We go in and add a gadget for the weather. So iframe. Iframes are where you're embedding another website into your site or embedding other content into your website. There is a gadget for that to be able to include that data. Uh, elementary schools, again. Do y'all do AR here? Not anymore? Okay. I know that that's in the past. Some other schools use AR, and they like to show how many books they read in class or things along those lines as a different type of gadget or iframe wrapper. You can also add feeds. Now, it's just showing a little thing about Facebook, adding Facebook feeds over in there. But you can also, if you're on Twitter, you're doing uh, different things with Twitter, you can import those in on a feed as well. Or bringing data in from other websites to your site. Google Maps. So, if you're doing, anybody in here do athletics with your school? No? Yeah. Yeah. So, with athletics, I find this to be a helpful thing. Adding Google Maps into your school site or into a Google site for your team or whatever. Because I don't know where every school's at that we play. Or as a parent, I want to know, I want to go see my child play a sport or whatever the case. Well, if you put the map up there, you can put push pins to show the parents we're going to play here today. And here's a map to get there. Well, they can see it. They can click, well, I need to get directions from my house to here. Automatically put it into your site. Slideshows, YouTube videos, or pictures. We talked about the pictures, but you can also embed YouTube videos. How many of you knew that Google owned YouTube? Anybody? YouTube is actually owned by Google. So, you know, the two big wonders of the world. Flash is not required for this either. Now, Flash does not run on your tablets. It does not run on Chromebooks to a degree. There is a slight version that runs on the Chromebooks. But for the most part, it does not run on any devices other than a traditional computer. <coughs> we're going to skip over to groups because we're going to talk about that later. So great things that I like to do, portfolios for students. Now, do you guys do the graduation requirement here still? No? All right. So in some districts, they require a student graduation project to where they've got to do a project, keep up with it for the four years that they're in college. Or what a lot of students do, they slam it all together in a month or two months before they graduate. Art students like to create a portfolio. They create a portfolio of all the artwork that they've done, different pictures they've taken, whatever the case may be. They can create that portfolio, keep it with them, use it as a project at a later time. So on the presentation, you're going to see several different ways that you can get support later on for Google Sites. There is a website devoted to supporting you with Google Sites. There's a lot of different information out there, and that is a link there that will take you directly to it. <coughs> Crib sheets, snippets, uh, cliff notes, whatever you want to call them that you can get little snippets of, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I get into doing this? 
reference documents, a portfolio about this teacher here. Just a little template site that's created that you can go and get a copy of if you want to. Come on. Some little videos for doing different th types of things with your Google Sites. So, one thing I do want to press on. Now, I mentioned something earlier about, you know, they say Google Sites are very basic. It's what you put into it is what you get out. Now, we're not close to the summertime. I've done several of these right before teachers get out. We go through, do some things with Google Sites, and then they spend the summer trying to get a site ready for the next year. Well, we've got Christmas coming up. There we go. So you got some time off, right? Because, you know, teachers don't do anything after hours, I know. So, But you may have some free time during the Christmas break. Take time. Decide who your audience is, how do you want it to look, what do you want to put on there, where does it need to go to, and of course, you know, have some neat little things like dancing bears on your site, you know, whatever the case may be that you want to do. So some little information about quotas. Some of these are outdated, okay? Now, for a, a school district, you are limited on the number of sites that you can have within the school district. I've had some school districts here in North Carolina that have hit that limit. Well, if there's a problem, get in touch with the technology department. They, in turn, normally call me, and we actually get that site's limit lifted because Google does not want to limit what you do inside of education because that's a chance that they may lose somebody to go to use something else. We can get those... Uh, lifted normally we're going to go through some of these things here I'm going to show you guys and explain those but the information is here inside the presentation if you want to see it um, Google Analytics how many of you are familiar with Google Analytics if you create a site you can get information about who accesses your website well I want to know how many people from around the world are viewing my site? You can set up Google Analytics to find out. You can even find out how many people are looking at my site on their cell phones versus computers. Or how many people are viewing it in South Carolina versus North Carolina or whatever the case may be. Those are really neat to have for your school websites. All right, we're going to dive in and take a look here. <clears throat> so getting access to your Google Sites. Whew, I may need to blow that up a little bit. Sites.google.com is where you can easily get access to creating websites. Or, if you get the Rubik's Cube inside of your email or inside of your Google Drive, I call it the Rubik's Cube, the nine square, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can click on it and easily get access to your Google Sites listed inside. Now, let me bounce over to this one. And have access to Google Sites. Now, for me, I've got several websites that I maintain and I work on and do different types of things. I've also got multiple logins on this computer. I'm going to bounce over to a different login so I can see, show you guys a certain site. So I'm going to bring up this Google site. This is actually the Google site that I gave you guys at goo.gl, j9, whatever it was, that comes up. Now you'll see I've got several trainings over on the left hand side that takes you to a lot of different types of things. Boy, I got a lot of them posted up there. So that's all trainings that I've done all across North Carolina. Well, we also, I record them. So if I go to DARE and I go to Google Calendar, I did a session on Calendar, you'll see that I've got my presentation listed. So you can see the presentation, click through it. Oh, wait a minute. Look, there's a link there. 
you see that if I was to click it, it would open up the website that's in there. I can also post videos. This is a video that I recorded that day. And we can play it through there. I used a different way to record this one, but it comes in here in just a second and does the screen control and everything. The videos are automatically, for me, posted on YouTube. So you've got to have access to YouTube to be able to view the videos. So what we're going to do is, this is basic Google Sites. So I've created this site already. I need to add some information to it. One of the things that I need to do is I need to create a page for Davie County Schools. So I'm going to create a page, and I'm going to call it Davy 2015. So it gives me the options for templates. <clears throat> well, do I want to create this as a web page, an announcement, a file cabinet, a list, or a start page? These are those templates that I was telling you guys about. I'm going to choose it as a web page, and I want to put it under home, which is at the top level. I'm going to say create. Now, how many of you have ever created a web page with something besides Google Sites? Okay. Anybody ever done the actual HTML coding? Got one little bit. You stole it from somewhere and stuck it on your website, right? <laughs> so, so, Weebly, I'm a firm believer of take it, steal it, hack it, make it your own. Okay. Don't recreate the wheel. If somebody's already typed up the coding for you to go and use, use it. Post it on your site as long as it doesn't have any liabilities to it or anything along those lines. Normally that stuff's available for you to use. Now here I'm just going to create this as my Davie County Schools. Uh, here I'm going to take it and I'm going to put... It's allowing me to type inside of here. Well, I can say, you know, Google Sites presentation. I can also put whatever the case is that I want to put. Oh, I messed up. I'm just going to say save. And you notice that it's underneath my home rather than a category out by itself. I want to move that. So I'm actually going to go and I'm going to tell it to move my page. And I want to move it to the root level and say move. Now I've got Davy out at this outside area. So it has its own little container and different types of things inside of it. I'm going to create a page. And again, I want to put this one under Davy 2015. I can name my page, and it's a website to, to create. Now I've got the site here to where I can edit and do my Google Sites Basic. I can easily go to insert. You can do a lot of different types of things. I wish that was a little bit clearer up there. But you see that I can insert an image, insert a link to a website, a table of contents, a lot of different types of things that I can insert. Insert, excuse me. I want to go to Drive and tell it I want to insert a presentation. It automatically goes and looks at my Google Drive. Because I told it it's a presentation, it looks for all the presentations that I've already got inside of my Google Drive. Well, I recently edited this one, so it comes up at the very top for me. I'm going to click on it. And tell it to insert. Do you want to include a border? No, I don't necessarily need a border, but I'm going to leave that. Sites presentation, I don't need the title. I'm not going to start the slideshow because I don't have it set on transitions or anything. And I'm going to make it a large presentation so you can easily see it. I hit save. My presentation is now <coughs> inserted in. And I can say save. Now it's in there for you guys now. 
So if you were actually to go to that website, it's automatically there. Everything is on the fly. As you go through, as you create it, it's live on the dot. So I'm giving my students a test. I don't want to give them access to it until it's time for them to get it. I'm going to create it. I'm going to insert the form just at the very beginning of the class. So I can insert the form. They can then go to my website. They'll see the form. They fill it out. At the end of class, I can remove it. Take it off. Or you can go tell it to quit accepting responses. And we'll talk about that in the Google Form session later this afternoon. So I've easily inserted that in there. You'll notice that I have comments down here at the bottom. If you're logged in to a Google site or to a Google account, you can insert comments. Students could insert comments as well if you wanted to. We could also add files. I could add files that are on my local hard drive or maybe that are in my Google Drive. I'm on a Chromebook here, so it automatically goes to my Google Drive and allows me to grab things off of there. Or I could go to my downloads and pick something and upload it in there. So Google Sites is what you call a what is it, Wig? What you see is what you get. So wherever, however you set it up, that's how it's going to look. Now I'm going to go back into my edit. <clears throat> and there's some different things that I want to show you. The layout of your page can look however you want it to be. So we can choose the standard one column if you want to. We can break it up into two columns. Separate it. We can go to three columns. We can do whatever the options it are that you want to do. Now you'll notice this one already has a sidebar over here, but if I choose the left sidebar, it automatically gives me another sidebar over here. It's hard to see because of my presentation that's there, but it's in the background back here. Let's get a hold of this presentation, and I'm just going to take that presentation out for right now. And I'm going to insert my presentation right over here. And I'm going to make it a small one so it doesn't take up my entire screen. So as you see, I've edited it. It's straight on the fly. We've got Hello World and our presentation there. So if I wanted to put other different pieces in there, I could. Different types of information, pictures, whatever the case may be that you want to do. Now, that's fine, well, and good. Everything's automatically done for me over here. My little navigation is done automatically on the fly for me. Well, I can also change my layout at any time. I go back to a one column, it automatically puts everything together. Now, the way that my site here is set up, I've chosen to have a navigation bar over on the left hand side. And then I've also got up at the top a head. When you set up your site, you can choose whether you want to have that navigation bar or not. Now, with that, I can go and tell it I want to change my page. Well, I am working on the fly here with a live page. <clears throat> so, I have a little gear up here that I can click on and get access to do a lot of different types of things. One, I can go and change my template. Now that's for my page. It's coming up. I want to change it to a file cabinet. I hit change. Now, this is now turned into a file cabinet page where if I look down here, I can add a bunch of files, links, Google Drive, whatever the case may be that I want to do. Oh, 
and you can also subscribe to my changes through email. It will email you and let you know when I add new files to this site. So where could that be used? Well, if this is a class, I add files to it constantly, assignments for my students. They can go, they can subscribe to the changes, and as the changes happen to my site, they'll get an email back letting them know. This one is set for an email. Now, if we change our template to an announcements, announcements, as you add post in, those are RSS feeds. So I'm just going to name this one test, test. Uh, this one's gone. It's not showing me. I've got it turned off. Um, so this is another site that I do, I work with, and you see how the, over on the announcements, it's got subscribe to post. That one is an RSS feed where you can subscribe to get all the different posts that are out there and available for you. So when you're not logged in, you're able to see the subscription. Now, you create a page and you decide you don't like it. You can go in and you can delete the page if you want to. Now, be very careful when you delete pages. You can delete them, and they'll go to a trash can. It's going to delete the following items. Am I sure I want to do it? Not really, but we're going to go ahead and do this. Now my, my page is gone. Oh, no. I didn't really mean to do that. I've just lost everything. Well, luckily, we happen to be a little safe here. We can go to our gear sprocket flower and then go to revision history. <clears throat> Just like your Google Docs, you have a revision history to be able to see what do I have, what did I have, what have I done, things along those lines. I can go to my deleted items or just go to my revision history to restore it. Now here I'm going to go to my deleted items. I'm going to choose my Google Sites Basic. I'm going to tell it to recover that portion. You'll notice it will permanently be deleted four weeks from now. So you've got it for a month. 30 days. After 30 days, it's going to be completely gone from your site. So I have recovered that one. If I open back up my Davy, I've got my Google Sites Basic here. I've got that information back again. Now, you also seen with the revision history, I can go back in time to several different versions of my document. Maybe I wanted to go back like a week ago, or two weeks, or three weeks, whatever the case may be, you have access to those revisions. Okay. You also can see your recent site activity. If you've got students collaborating on a Google site, they're working as a team <coughs> on a project. Is everybody pulling their weight on the project? Is everybody editing the site, putting their information up there or whatever? You can have the students share the site with you and then you have access to being able to see all these different items. Well, I see that John is doing a lot of work on this site, but Sally doesn't have her name anywhere on there. She's not 
either A, she's not helping John with the site, or John's not letting Sally help, or they're just using the same login or something along those lines. So as an instructor, as a teacher, you can go in and see who's making all the edits to the site, being able to work with the students. Why is your name not listed any up here? Or whatever the case may be that it that you need to see. So those page templates that we talked about. So I've got page templates here. And you see I've got announcements, file cabinet, list, start page, web page. Those are all standards. <coughs> you can also create your own page template if you want to. You've got a site that you create, a page on your site that you create. You can make that into a template to be able to have as new pages that you create that it automatically is a default for you how you want your page to look. You can do that if you want to. So I can go tell it I want to create a page. It's a web page and it's a template called JW Template. It's creating, it's creating, we're waiting, way too long. All right, we're going to hit cancel. We would create that template and have it as a listing underneath our user created templates there. So, any questions so far? on the basics, Google Sites, creating the site, anything along those lines. Well, sharing and permissions. You can share your website with different people. You can share your site publicly to the world if you want to. You see here that mine is set to anyone who has the link can view. And there's the link to share with people so they can view my page. Well, I can also hit change there. There's other options that I have inside of here. One, the top one is on. Publicly on the web. Public on the web means Google, Bing, Yahoo, all the different search engines can find your website. That may not be a bad thing. <clears throat> so I have that as an option. That way if anybody goes and search for Google Sites, maybe my website will pop up on there. And then my Google Analytics will find out where they're from and I can see those different types of things about people. Or maybe I only wanted people with the link. Only if you have the link to my site can you access it. Or for me, I'm logged into my mailbox.mcnc account. That's my work account. I'm logged into my Google account and I can say on. Anybody at the company can access my site. Well, they can search for it. They can find it. They can view it. I can also change that to where only people at my work that has the link to it can access. So if they don't have the link, they can't access my site. Now that may be helpful inside of the school situation. <coughs> Students must log in, and then also they must have the link to it in order to access your site to see it. You could choose that as an option. Or turn the sharing off, and it's only available to the people that you say have access to it. Well, maybe I only want to have myself to have access to it until I completely have the site ready to go for everybody to view it. I can do that. Well, for this instance, I'm going to turn this on publicly on the web to where any and everybody can view it. <clears throat> I can also add individual people that I want to edit my site with me. So I can add my personal Gmail account here. I can add it in there, and I can tell it, oh, well, he can edit. 
he can view or he is an owner of the site. Edit gives you access to being able to edit the sites. It does not give you access to editing the background layout pieces. Being an owner of the site allows you to edit the background pieces of the website. Remember over here we had that bar over here that had the navigation and then the top had the header up there. If you are not an owner, you cannot edit those types of things. Now, now wait a minute. With a Google document, only one person can be an owner of a document, right? That's true. In a Google site, you can have multiple people as an owner to being able to view different types of things, being able to edit those types of pieces. And then we've got view only. I want to grant, I'm the only one that has access and all the students that I say can have access to my site. I can share it with them and then, you know, I've got a first period website, I've got a second period website, and a fourth period website. Only those students can access their site. That way they're not cross, um, they're not seeing each other's data or anything along those lines. So that's up to you for those settings that you want to do. In the advanced set session, we'll talk about page level permissions and how you can set up some other options with the permissions to where they are only able to edit their piece of the puzzle. Any questions? Anything? Yes, sir. What you just explained is um, for the entire site, or can I format that for each page? Page level permissions is for each page. The overall, um, the one that we just went through is the overall. If you were to turn on page level permissions, that allows you to do each individual page somebody else has access to edit. <coughs> and we'll actually talk about that here in a few minutes. Um, in the next session, we'll be talking about page level. Any questions? Uh, make sure you guys got your stickers. Um, if you do not, I've got the sheet up here so I can get those to you so that you're able to go ahead and get those. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming, and we'll see you in the next time.